Arborea is a surprisingly fun game that I bought a while ago, but only recently got around to playing. It had more depth and more fun content than I expected, but it's held back by a lack of polish and some balancing issues. So let's get into it. Arborea is a third-person action roguelite with souls-like combat. You play as a series of trolls, and your goal is to explore the caves below to heal Father Tree, gather minerals or vary, sacrifice the gods, and fuel your progression, and beat up a lot of enemies and bosses along the way. Your arsenal consists of two weapons you can swap between freely, two mutations you can also swap between, and consumables, including the healing bongo with a limited number of charges per level. You'll collect various upgrades, weapons for randomized modifiers, and stat increases along the way that make up your build. You also unlock an ultimate ability that has very powerful effects, and you charge up by dealing damage to enemies around you. The combat itself feels pretty similar to a Souls game. It has similar winding up attack animations that require you to commit, as well as requiring you to learn enemy movesets and animations to predict incoming attacks and react accordingly. But Arborea is generally more forgiving and faster paced than Souls-like games, without quite as much animation lock, and there's also no stamina bar. You can spam your attacks and roll as much as you want without limits. The game can be played with free targeting or target lock on. Usually, you want to use the free targeting for large groups of enemies with target lock on for bosses or clearing up the final few guys. It's very easy to lock on and unlock on, and I definitely recommend target locking when applicable, because sometimes your troll will miss hits that they really shouldn't if you aren't locked on. And that's especially true given some of those tight corridors and obstacles present in the game that just makes aiming a little more difficult. There's definitely a bit of jank in the combat systems between the targeting and attack animations. You can get used to it pretty quickly. There's a surprising amount of depth in that combat. On that note, the weapon variety in Arborea is one of the game's biggest strengths for me. In general, you have a standard attack and an alternative attack that can be held and charged up. There are probably 15 to 20 weapons in this game, and each have their own moveset and attack chains, as well as a special mechanic or two. For example, the hammer has a special charge attack that rushes you forward, the halberd slowly gets bigger as you attack more and more with it, and the whip allows you to dodge backwards at the end of some attack chains. Each weapon felt truly unique to play with, and it was fun to explore and experiment with that variety. I was honestly really surprised with how many weapon types were present in the game, Now they kept giving new weapons that I found more and more novel mechanics. Outside of your main weapons, the game also gives you mutations, which are basically equivalent to skills or abilities in other games. They're often ranged damaging abilities, but there's some other unique ones as well, like a powerful shield. These mutations require mana to use, and you mostly get mana from smacking enemies with your main weapon. Generally speaking, I like these mutations, and I often use them to deal damage from a safe distance. And I overall liked how the mana system works. It incentivizes you to get there close, deal a lot of melee damage, in order to use these powerful alternative abilities. I'm sure there's a lot of unique and creative things you can do with some of the crowd control abilities, but honestly, I didn't really experiment with those that much. It's also worth noting that the shield has a parry ability as well, so you can play this game with that parry style if you want to. And that might even be needed at some higher difficulty levels that are beyond my personal reach. The build crafting in this game is also surprisingly deep. It generally feels more tame and you won't break the game so to speak, but there's still a lot of fun combos. Weapons, mutations, and armor can have randomized modifiers that make you more powerful, ranging from simple stat increases to powerful effects, like making your weapons heal you for a portion of damage dealt. As you progress further into the depths, you'll want to keep looting and completing chest events, which are wave defense events that reward you with more weapons, armor, etc. As you might expect, weapons you find later on, in general, have better base stats and modifiers than weapons you find earlier on. And there are certain weapon types that can only be found in later areas. Additionally, you can imbue your equipment with five different elements, which make them deal additional elemental damage and cause conditional effects. Each conditional effect has two levels that can trigger as you deal more and more elemental damage. For example, as you deal ice damage, enemies begin to slow. If you deal even more ice damage, enemies can freeze completely, allowing you to spam attacks without worrying about being hit. Across games, I always love playing around with different condition effects. And I was pretty satisfied with the system in Arborea. It was fun to experiment with. There are a lot of different effects and alternating between, say, freezing enemies to causing void explosions that dealt AoE damage was a lot of fun in my various runs. As the final element of build crafting, you have traits, which allow for unique passive effects and give stat buffs alongside them. These can be incredibly powerful and also change the way you play. 
For example, one trait can give you 50% increased damage each time you alternate between your regular and alternative attack. And that encouraged you to swap between them with each swing. On the other hand, another trait makes your final attack in an attack chain deal increased damage, which incurs the opposite behavior. If you have that trait, you want to keep attacking with the same style to finish that combo and get that increased damage. I quite liked how these traits actually changed your playstyle as opposed to just giving you pure stat buffs. On the opposite side of combat, the enemy variety in Arborea is also pretty good. Each area of the game has their own unique set of about 10 enemy types with their own movesets and weaknesses. The game also does a really good job of avoiding frustrating enemies. Each area has several mini bosses and a final boss to close them out, which were all fun fights, although a couple of them are kind of simple. Enemies can also have those different elements I talked about earlier, which give the enemies different passive effects and even slightly different attack patterns. And that, again, just furthers that enemy variety. The elemental effects have a classic rock, paper, scissors system where each element is weaker to one element and stronger against another. This means that, ideally, you want your two weapons to have different elements to counter the different elemental types, different enemies that you run across on each run. However, I think the enemy variety and that balancing kind of falls apart in the final area. Some of it's definitely just a skill issue on my end, but I found some of the enemies in the final area to be more frustrating, as well as have too much health and become bullet sponges. The game often makes things more challenging, but just throwing a lot of enemies at you at once and that quickly becomes unmanageable and a lot less fun when it takes forever to kill each enemy. I had a similar issue with the final boss this game, being a huge bullet sponge to the point of being tedious and quite unfun. Another thing it's important to know about Arborea is that the runs themselves have a huge focus on cross-run progression. As you're playing, you'll spend a pretty large portion of each run working on cross-run progression, and I'll talk more about the unlocks and such later on. It's also important to know you don't always complete runs in Arborea in a typical roguelite fashion, starting at the first area and going all the way to the final boss. In fact, you often skip ahead to later areas and likely stop returning to the first areas at all at a certain point. If you were to try to go from start to finish, these runs could definitely take hours. Even the abridged and shortened runs can be quite long and multiple hours. As such, Arborea is not a roguelite you can pick up on a quick break and hope to finish a run. While you can jump to the last level you have unlocked, you often want to go a couple floors back for a couple different reasons. First, it allows you to get more weapons, armor, and mutations. That better equipment makes you more powerful. But also, you need to collect Vary by killing enemies, completing events, and smashing Vary deposits that you find. You effectively need to get a minimum amount of Vary on each run. Each time you die, you have the ability to offer a portion of your Vary to the gods, which in turn makes them happier. This allows you to pick better trolls for your next run, as well as giving increased buffs and modifiers in different ways. But if you do poorly on a run, or if you don't sacrifice enough fairy, you're punished. Your next run is harder because your trolls are weaker. In order to prevent that punishment, you have to collect enough fairy. And importantly, the amount of fairy you need to sacrifice goes up as the game goes on. And as you progress further in the game, the amount of fairy you need to sacrifice to even break even can be more of the amount of fairy you collected on that run if you jump too far ahead and die too quickly. This means your next run is harder because you're weaker, and of course, you also have less Vary to spend on those cross-run upgrades, those unlocks, which is the main purpose of Vary. This wouldn't necessarily be a big problem on its own, but because of how long and slow runs are, it can start to feel really tedious when you have to do, let's say, 20 to 30 minutes of Vary farming at the start of each run in order to break even and not have a debuff. Honestly, this very sacrifice mechanic didn't really bother me for about 90% of my playthrough. And I liked the idea of choosing how much to sacrifice to get better buffs for saving more for cross run upgrades and progression that way. But when I got to the final area, it began to feel really tedious. And that very requirement to break even began to feel exceptionally high. This, combined with the frustrating and tanky enemies that I talked about earlier, made me stop enjoying the game in the final area, despite loving everything up to it. The last major thing I want to talk about in the gameplay section are the bugs. Despite having left early access a while ago, there's still a lot of things that are buggy and unpolished. Honestly, all the game's core systems feel complete. It feels finished content-wise, but I just ran into a lot of different bugs. Invisible walls are pretty common, as is getting stuck on obstacles. Sometimes I'll see something and I just can't get to it because of that buggy environment. Sometimes enemies can hit you through walls or obstacles and vice versa. And on occasion, I've had enemies spawn in areas that trap them and maybe had to cancel survival events because I couldn't get to the enemies to actually kill them. And the worst bug I had 
was I had to restart a whole floor once because I got frozen after talking to an NPC because my character was interrupted during that conversation. And outside of those bugs, the game just feels clunky sometimes because of a lot of short loading screens and animations that just break the gameplay up. Importantly though, you can always skip those animations, but skipping five animations in a row still feels clunky. But as a whole, I really wasn't bothered by most of these bugs and game disruptions because you just play around them and they aren't really game breaking. For the most part, they're avoidable. But it does definitely make the game worse than if it didn't have them. And when I first started playing, they were kind of frustrating. Also of note, Arborea is not Steam Deck verified, but I did still download it to give it a whirl on my Steam Deck. It's definitely playable, but there's also noticeable lag. This isn't really surprising in hindsight because there were a couple times where it lagged on my PC too, mostly when a lot of enemies spawned in or I used an ultimate ability that hit a lot of enemies. But regardless, because of that lag, I would not recommend picking up this game to play on Steam Deck. Now let's talk about RNG and variety in Arborea. The main source of randomness comes in the form of what you're able to build craft with. The weapons, armor, mutations, and traits that you find are randomized. This means that a large portion of your build is randomized, and you can't always run the same weapon each time. However, there is still some strong counter RNG systems in place for all of your equipment. After you unlock it, you can choose your starter weapon. But at baseline, you can choose a starter weapon out of a pool of options, and you can reroll those options when you unlock that ability. But more powerfully, you can also create a very specific weapon. So if you really want to start with a saber each run, you can always start with a saber. However, both rerolling and creating that custom weapon requires scraps, which is the currency you get along your runs for each weapon you find but don't use. Similar to Vary, the system encourages you to go back further, start runs earlier on, in order to farm up more scraps and create better weapons. That being said, this counter RNG system really only applies to your starter weapon. And you'll usually upgrade it pretty quickly during your runs. As a result, I never really felt pressured to farm for scraps in the same way I did for Vary. And the same mechanic in principle applies to mutations in armor as well that have their own respective scrap currencies. During runs themselves, you can also find elemental essences. They like to change the elemental types for your armor, weapons, and mutations. And this is helpful because each run only has enemies of three of the five elemental types. So usually you want your weapons to be specific elemental types that best counter the elemental enemy types that you run across on a given run. The final element of build crafting, the traits, also has some great variety. You can always choose from at least three options, sometimes more if you loot extra traits during your run. The build crafting allows for a good amount of control mixed with a good amount of randomness. Outside of that, the game has adequate map and level variety, the surprising amount of events you can stumble across, like one that requires you to find keys across the map to unlock a chest, one that requires you to dig through graves, just a lot of fun things like that. All these events do more or less reward the same thing, just more equipment, but it's still fun to stumble across them and try them out. However, like a lot of things in this game, I do think there are some balancing issues. Mostly, I think certain healing traits and modifiers are really powerful, almost too powerful. One trait, for example, gives you more healing bongos as you attack enemies, and one weapon modifier converts some of your damage into healing. You certainly don't need these buffs or these modifiers to succeed, but yeah, they make the game a lot easier and a lot more forgiving. The other problem with variety for Arborea comes in the ways that runs work. Because you don't start each run from the beginning, you'll often spend more time consecutively in a single area. In a normal, standard roguelite, you might spend, say, 15 minutes at a time in each area before moving on to the next one, and the next one, and then restarting. I often spent hours in a row in a single area, because I started in that biome, but also died in that biome for several runs back to back. This can make a lot of enemy variety that does exist in the game feel more limited, because you're only seeing a small pool of those enemies on a given run. The obvious response and reply to this is to just start from the beginning, see all the enemies. But that started to feel tedious to me, because those early levels didn't offer much in terms of reward, and added a lot of time to runs. This variety issue definitely doesn't ruin the game for me, but it did limit some of that run to run variety and therefore overall enjoyment. Now let's talk about the progression system in Arborea. Arborea has a lot of vertical progression and cross run upgrades that make you more powerful. Most progression in this game is gated behind healed roots and vary. You collect healed roots by completing root events during your runs and they act as a level threshold of sorts. Each unlock or upgrade requires you to have a certain number of healed roots in order to purchase it. Importantly, as your total number of healed groups go up, 
you have to progress deeper and deeper in order to find new roots to heal. I really like that system because it prevented you from just farming roots in early levels, and it acts as an incentive to start your runs deeper to reach those healed roots quicker. As you unlock more roots, you also unlock more NPCs for your home base, and each NPC focuses on a certain type of upgrade that you can spend very on. For example, the first NPC you unlock allows you to pick your starter weapon, as I talked about earlier, as well as purchase upgrades for that weapon, like increasing damage or better starter weapons. All these unlocks require Vary, which you collect during your runs. And because you choose what you want to spend Vary on, you can really customize what you unlock first according to your needs, your preferences, and your priorities. Most upgrades start out really cheap, but they can get really expensive pretty quickly. It's not that hard to get a lot of the basic upgrades, but if you actually want to unlock everything in the game, it would take quite a long time. Upgrades range from standard stat increases, like increased healing per bongo use, to unlocking different variants, like unlocking a different healing bongo for each elemental type that all have little different healing mechanics. One negative of the variety systems is it kind of feels like you have to commit to one specific variety for things like bongos and ultimate abilities. With bongos, for example, you can make the shock bongo heal a lot more with each upgrade, and that makes it harder to make yourself try the fire bongo, for example, when it's a level 1 bongo as opposed to the strong level 5 shock bongo. But as a whole, I liked this main progression system. I enjoyed the variety of NPCs, and I think the root healing system combined with the vary is a great way to balance upgrade flexibility with hard thresholds that require you to be progressed far enough in order to get certain upgrades. The progression system also allows you to unlock some NPCs that give you risk reward mechanics. They buff you in some ways and make you weaker in others. But similar to a lot of things in this game, while it felt great for the first 90% of my playthrough, it did start to feel grindy and less enjoyable at the end. It also felt required along the way to get enough upgrades because they're so powerful that reaching later levels without enough upgrades can make you feel very weak. In addition to the main upgrades that you can buy with Fairy, there are a couple other smaller mechanics here and there. One is the scrap system that I talked about earlier that allows you to start with better equipment. Another is blueprints that you find for each piece of equipment, and that's what gives the ability to pin scraps on certain weapons in the first place. You have to get the saber blueprint before you can buy a saber to start runs with. There are also batteries you can find. In order to skip to later levels, you must first unlock the elevator on that level. In order to do that, you have to both get to that floor and use a battery on the elevator. This wasn't really a big barrier or huge mechanic because batteries are pretty easy to get. It mostly just slows down your ability to jump ahead, start deeper early on, and becomes irrelevant as you keep playing. In terms of difficulty levels, there are two main systems in the game. One is New Game Plus, and one is New Game Plus Plus both of which have unique challenges and modifiers, but also unlock more upgrades. The second system comes in the form of Father Tree, which is a Hades-like challenge system where you can make runs harder in certain ways, like buffing enemies' health, for example. Being the final boss of these challenges unlocked allows you to level up Father Tree, which in turn allows you to unlock some more upgrades to spend very on. I didn't really experiment with these challenges myself because I found the final area in the game to be hard enough already, but if you're keen for a challenge, New Game Plus Plus only allows you 10 lives from start to finish, and I have to imagine that's incredibly challenging. Now let's talk about the narrative and story in Arborea. And I have to say, I was really pleasantly surprised here. The game opens with you playing as Gobok, who goes mad after placing a sophisticated technology hat on his head. You then play as future trolls, who dive into a dungeon full of insects, reptiles, and more, on a mission to heal Father Tree, gather Vary for the tribe, and try to find Gobok. Beyond those basics though, the world is full of oddities and mysteries. Who are these gods you're sacrificing very to at the start of each run? What is the hat the Gobak wore? What are you actually trying to find at the bottom of this dungeon? The game adds more story and intrigue with lore audio logs you can find in the hubs between areas or floors. I listened to all these audio logs religiously. I was incredibly disappointed when I found out that I had heard all of them because I really wanted to hear more and get more of that story. The story also continues into New Game Plus and New Game Plus Plus, which you have to complete in order to get the true final ending. Arborea is one of the few roguelites that's made me want to look up more about the story online, which is honestly a pretty fruitless endeavor because there really isn't much community online talking about this game. And outside of that more direct storyline, the game just has a lot of character to it, and it's a pretty funny game. I wouldn't say this game's sense of humor lines up exactly with my own sense of humor, but I did still find some of the gags pretty funny. And there's one gag that made me laugh out loud before one of the bosses. As another example, before each of your runs, there's a funny short cutscene 
that ends up in your character getting thrown into the dungeon pit in a lot of different ways. So what's my verdict on Arborea? Overall, I had a lot more fun with it than I expected. It's a solid action roguelite, and one of the only roguelites out there that uses Souls-like gameplay. Weapon variety is surprisingly great, and the enemies are fun to learn and master. It has a lot of character and charm to it, and it's some of the best narrative that I've seen in a roguelite. That said, this game is held back by a couple different issues. The game feels unbalanced in a lot of different ways, like how many enemies it throws at you at once, and how powerful certain traits and weapon modifiers are. The game also has a lot of bugs, though for the most part, they're not game breaking. And this game has heavy vertical progression, which can be a pro or a con, depending on your preference. If you're looking for a solid action roguelite or a Souls-like roguelite, I would recommend grabbing Arborea on sale. The systems and gameplay felt incredibly enjoyable for most of my playthrough, but I don't think it quite sticked the landing near the end, and that limits my replayability with the game. I just got tired of grinding, the spongy enemies, and the balance issues. Huge shout out to all of our channel members for helping support the channel. Please like this video to help me out in the algorithm, and thanks for watching.